Blake for God Live, weekly top five baits, Q&A. <clears throat> Man, I wish I could remember how to see those comments. Hang on just a second. Let me see if I can find these comments on here. Sorry about the big thumb in the way. <clears throat> hmm. All right. Man, I wish I knew how to do these comments better. I cannot, for some reason, remember. There it is. Nick. Nick, please don't have a wreck. I appreciate you watching while you're driving home from work. But man, please don't have a wreck. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Look at this mosquito right here. We're coming to you live outside the Euro Lake Fort Guide compound. We're sitting in the driveway today. Just back the boat in. Long, long day on the water. What's up, Mike Callahan? <clears throat> Glad to see you here, buddy. So we're going to... All the way from Lake Fort Marina. Hey, well this is the video for you because I know you. if you're Lake Fort Marina, you must be <clears throat> must be fishing the Skeeter Owners Tournament, which is this weekend. All right, so we're gonna do a gotta do a pretty quick live stream. It's uh, and partially thanks to, to a lot of you guys that are <clears throat> creating the following that we have, helping getting the the awareness out there about the channel. And uh, man, I'm so booked and so crazy. I ran two half day trip. <clears throat> Excuse me, man. Voice all messed up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ran two half day trips today. That makes for a long day on the water. We got an early morning tomorrow. So, uh, we're going to knock out a quick one right here. So, I'm going to break right in. <clears throat> Excuse me. Break right into our top five baits. Right now, I'm starting my mornings out with that bluegill colored. Spook Junior. That's the junior size spook, a little bit smaller one than the big giant ones we normally throw. Um, they're they're still biting the frog, but I got a lot of fish that are coming up and not committing all the way to the frog and not getting it. But with this bait, we're catching them. Um, kind of starting our mornings off with a Spook Junior right now. Then to kind of go along with that. Uh, Throwing this new Smash Tech bait. Oh, uh, new Gizzard Shad. This is a five inch version. <clears throat> I'm actually rigging this. <clears throat> God dang, boys, I'm sorry about my voice. I'm actually rigging this on an 8 aught owner flashy swimmer hook. Um, also, you can rig it on a 6 aught quarter ounce uh, owner beast hook. That works as well, too. But I kind of like that flashy swimmer deal. Adds a little flavor. Put a little pepper in the gumbo for them, if you know what I mean. Uh, we're catching some good fish on this bait. We've been fishing in a couple other lakes as well as Fork. Uh, I've had it just, just two days on, on a different lake. And they have absolutely smashed this thing. And now we're starting to catch a few fish on Fork with this bait as well. Uh, the video that we put out on Wednesday, this bait is linked in the description. So if you're interested in the new Gizzard Chad swim bait from Smash Tech... Check out the video we did on Wednesday, the last video, the last video I uploaded um, just yesterday. And uh, click that link and go check out that bait. Something about when you go on live, your voice starts getting all gravelly, your nose starts trying to bother you like you want to sneeze. Man, I tell you what, live YouTube is awesome, isn't it? Alright, so the third thing. For my shallow water stuff is my old trusty, trusty wacky worm. We have a lot of days right now. Well, we just haven't had wind, which is weird for this time of year. But we've had a lot of days where it's just got slick calm and sunshiny skies. When that happens on that shallow grass, I'm going to a wacky worm. 
that keeps me getting bit all day long. You can throw this across that grass flat, just let it get in that grass, pop it up out, let it go back down in it. That will always, day in, day out, get you bites right there. <laughs> So that's our three shallow baits we're using. Then I'm going out deep. I've got two baits for out deep that I'm really using that are really catching fish uh, consistently. For our big fish, I am still using the three quarter ounce six inch hybrid jig if I'm looking for a big bite on deep structure. Got that paired up with that old range crawl. The other thing, and this is actually a bite and a pattern that I hadn't been on in a long time, so I'm pretty excited about it. But just old 10-inch worm, that's an LFT, 10-inch ribbon tail worm right there. That's a blue fleck with red flake. That's a blue fleck worm with red flake added into it. That's a standard color they have at LFT. One of my favorites. Blue fleck is traditionally a wonderful color, especially on fork, and I like having that red flake in there. Um, so there you go on that that's our top five bait oh the way I'm rigging that for those deep fish I'm actually throwing this on a very light weight I like to throw a light weight out deep on my big worms I'm throwing a quarter ounce weight 5 aught straight shank Hayabusa flipping hook is the hook I'm using I like a straight shank hook on my big worms All right, let's see here. Time to answer some questiones. It's the man, Billy. Thanks. Mojo. Mojo Fishing asks, what's the best moving bait for dirty water? Um, Movement ADX. Caught a lot of fish in dirty water on Movement ADX. It has such a hard hard wobble in action and it's just a loud moves a whole bunch of water i really like a chartreuse and black movement adx and dirty water for a moving bait all right joe mullis says i'm going to be co-angling my first bfl trying to minimize my gear can i throw spooks whopper ploppers and other top waters on the same rod that i throw a frog on 65 pound braid i would never and i know there's guys that do it but here's the deal if you're gonna throw braid on a spook or a whopper plopper or any treble hook top water you need to have a light rod much lighter than you throw a frog on that is two different style of hooks that is two different style of hook sets you cannot pair the same gear up on those two techniques and be successful buddy i'm sorry i hate to tell you that but you can throw you can throw like 15 pound mono on something and 15 pound mono can do a lot of different things for you and be okay at it and that's what you can throw your spooks on. For my offshore stuff, Nick Jones asked for my offshore stuff, am I hitting points or humps or what and what depths have you been catching them at mostly? Okay, hey, we went out. I actually did the two half-day trips for both uh, prep for Skeeter Owners Tournament. And I can kind of, without telling you the spots, I can kind of share what we looked at. On the deep stuff, on the offshore fishing, um, I'm fishing all 100% main lake points right now. Main lake points, main lake points, and more main lake points. <clears throat> we are... Um, Today, the depth, like the magic depth for the bigger fish was 19 feet. 19 feet is where I marked big fish. Um, man, come on, quit updating comments. I can't concentrate on one comment at a time. For the smaller fish today, they were closer to like 15 foot. So those fish are a little bit shallower than what they have been. They're a little bit higher up on those points is what we found today. So 15 foot for my, my big schools of unders. And 19 foot for my small wolf packs of big fish. Yeah. So catching. Oh, dang it. Catch. <coughs> crap. So 
sorry guys, these comments are doing a really weird thing. Somebody says, catching tons of two-pound fish offshore on a drop shot, change bait for bigger fish, or find a different school. Find a different school. If you're talking about fork right now, and I'm sure every lake probably translates about the same, uh, they're schooled by size 100%. If there's a bunch of little ones in there, a bunch of unders, two pounders, there's not going to be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pounders in there. Uh, when those big fish pull up on those points, those little fish, they get the heck out of there. Because at this point, they're fair game too. They might get eaten. Yeah, medium heavy, yeah. That, so Jason Cobb's talking about those treble hook topwater baits. If you're going to throw braid on your treble hook topwater baits, he, th he says he throws them on a medium heavy rod. But I don't want to throw a medium heavy rod on I don't want to throw a frog on a medium heavy rod. <clears throat> Man, I'm really sorry about my voice, guys. <clears throat> what are my prices for my guide service? Curious for the future. Appreciate you watching the vids. Uh, my guide. <clears throat> Man, that's bad. I'm really sorry. My guide prices are $450 for a full day, $300 for a half. That's either one or two people. Same price. What is the thermocline and how do I find it or know what it is? What does it mean if there is one? That is one of the best questions we've ever had. Kyle Long, thank you very much for asking that question. So, the thermocline. The thermocline is in the summertime when the water starts losing oxygen content. The hotter it gets, the water, the deepest water will lose oxygen content. If you look on your electronics, you go idle out over the deepest part of the lake, the bottom, you know, whatever it is, 10, 20, 30 feet will be fuzzy on your graph. It'll just be like almost like a bait ball but it'll cover the whole screen across that bottom depth so if you've got like 40 foot of water and the thermoclines in 20 foot then the bottom 20 foot will just be fuzzy on your graph that's a thermocline what that is is the oxygen content has got completely depleted in that deeper water there's like very very low to no oxygen content in that deeper water let me reread that question so i make sure i answer it correctly so that's how to find it. That's what it is. What does it mean if there's one? What it means is those fish will not be comfortable or really be able to survive over long periods of time underneath that thermocline level. So what happens is because it's hot, they want to be as deep as possible, but yet they can't go under that oxygen barrier. So they will actually set up in 20 foot. If your thermocline is at 20 foot, top side at 20 foot, those fish will usually set up 18 to 20 foot. They'll be as deep as they can and as cool of water as they can be, but they'll be right over the top of that thermocline. And a lot of times, that creates suspended bass, um, which is a reason that it makes it tough. I like to look for structure that coincides with that depth. I like to try and find fish on ledges and humps and all that stuff that, that peaks right at the same depth as that uh, thermocline does because I feel like that's what they're going to use when they're the most active. That's how I like to go about it. Sometimes they all suspend right around that thermocline level. And, man, it's tough. Mark Pax, one of the best in the world. Mark Pax, a fellow Lake Fork guy. He might be the best guy in the world at catching those suspended thermocline fish in the summer. He actually will go out in 40, 50 foot of water and fish a weightless giant fluke and count it down to those suspended fish. And he catches giants. You ready for a vid of me and Rob again? <laughs> We've been trying to get it together, man. The schedules just haven't worked out. Rob's a busy guy. I'm a busy guy. And our schedules just haven't lined up. But uh, we're working on getting back in the same boat once again as soon as possible. I've got a little bit of a secret honey hole I'm saving for him. And when I get, when I get him here, we're going to go check it out. And hopefully we're going to have a 
just a heck of a day just smashing them. When will I fish with Lake Fork Guy? I will fish with Lake Fork Guy as soon as he says he wants to fish with me. <laughs> I actually met his dad and talked to his dad a couple weeks ago, and I told him, I said, hey, man, let him know. Whenever he's ready, we'll do it. So that'd be cool because I'm, I'm honestly, you know, he's kind of a guy that I looked up to, even though he's younger than me, but I'm kind of following a lot of the same path that he did uh, starting the YouTube channel. He started a YouTube channel when he started guiding. Uh, there's a lot of similarities into the path that I'm walking to the one he's already walked and, and done extremely well. Very successful guy. Every every account I've ever heard of him, he's a very good person. So I look forward to the day that we can spend some time together. Hopefully that'll that'll happen someday. What's wrong with that, Nathan? I don't know what's going on. Somebody told me to marry a hamster in the comments. That's... That's pretty good stuff. Pretty proud of him. What rod action would I throw uh, top waters with heavy mono? Hopefully I'm still here. Somebody in the comments let me know if you can still see me, please. Because I just got a phone call in the middle of a live stream. That's how busy my guide service is. I just get phone calls every 15 minutes. <laughs> It's a beautiful thing. It's a lot of work, and I'm very tired, but it's a beautiful thing. Uh, what? Okay. Somebody let me know if you can see me. Oh, you can hear me? Can you see me? Can't, can't see, can hear me, gray screen. Okay. If you can hear me and you're still here, I'm going to close this one out and start a new one. Okay? Y'all all join my new one. It's coming up just immediately after this one ends. Can you see me now? Somebody tell me. Hmm. Boy, this has been a train wreck of a live stream. Outstanding. I'm back. Hey, we're back in business. All right, awesome, guys. Thanks for letting me know. Thank you so much for your patience. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties. Uh, this is what happens. When you get a good old East Texas redneck trying to uh, deal with technology. All right, I know I skipped some at the top. Let's go back up to the top and try to find some questions. Who's my favorite subscriber? Somebody asked who, my, who my favorite subscriber is. Man, it's like children, man. I love all of you equally, and I will never, ever tell you the deep, dark secret of which one of you is my favorite. Just like a parent, right? Man, I hate how these comments update and kick me down to the bottom. This stinks. Next week I'm using my computer again. Holy cow. All right, we're just going to try from the bottom. If you have a question I didn't get it, ask me again. I'm sorry, I can only see it at the bottom. It keeps kicking down the bottom. You're fishing Lake Fork right now. What bait should you use? Richard Gregory, did you not see the top five baits, bro? Like, we literally just gave you the top five baits for Lake Fork right now. I don't even know. We still love you. <laughs> I'm glad y'all still love me, even though I wouldn't see, tell you who my favorite was. I look good. MSU kicker, I really appreciate you saying that I look good. And I'm not really sure how comfortable I am with you saying that. But somehow it makes me feel a little warm and fuzzy inside. So, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Oh, you're fishing. Okay, top five baits. Top five bait recap real quick for Richard Gregory. Uh, Spook Jr., bluegill pattern. Little gizzard chad swim bait with a uh, flashy swimmer hook. That's a smash tech bait. It's linked in my video from Wednesday, the last video I did yesterday. Wacky worm, wacky rig trick worm. That's a watermelon candy color. And then when I go out deep, my big fish I'm catching on a uh, three-quarter ounce hybrid jig from Six Cents. Football jig's fine. Three-quarter ounce football jig, too. Rage Crawl Trailer. And last but not least, a 10-inch worm. This is a blue fleck with red flake in it, added in it. Color, but blue fleck is just fine. 10-inch worm on a quarter ounce weight. Five-out high boost of straight shank flipping hook. That's for you, Richard Gregory. Hope that helps, buddy. 
<laughs> I'm your second favorite channel. Rob's your number one. <laughs> hey, that's all right. I, that, that's good. I hope you like both of us, and I hope you watch every video from both of us, man. Rob's a good dude. Favorite bait presentation and color for fishing. Coontail for bluegill eaters. Coontail for bluegill eaters. Um, swim jig, swim bait. Those are, I, I mean, that's one or the other. Uh, sometimes they're on the swim jig. Usually when the water's a little dirtier, they'll be on the swim jig more. When the water's crystal clear, swim bait. Little five inch swim bait. Um, that kicker fish, that Kitek, in that brownish color. I think I've got one laying around somewhere in here. I can't put my hands on it right this second. There's one. So this color, it's like gold bream or something like that on a 5 aught uh, belly weighted hook. That is that in a blue good color swim jig or my favorite for coontail grass with brim beds. <laughs> you live in Bluegill, you're struggling with my suggestions, you need to move to, yes, you do need to move to Texas. If you live in Illinois, I strongly suggest you move in Texas. Where are bass beds in relation to Bluegill beds? They actually bed in the same exact area. They're right next to each other. It's just the bass bed earlier, and then, you know, within just a couple weeks, usually no more than a month after the bass, you know, are finally done, their, their final cycle is, final wave has come in and left the beds, um, the brims start bedding up typically. That's typically how it goes now. Do I have a .1 antenna on my ZX225? I don't even know what that is. Sorry. Nope, I don't have an antenna. I have my Lawrence unit came standard the way they sell a ZX25 right off the showroom floor. Getting blow-ups on a frog uh, as of this week, but not very good results, flipping and punching. Flipping and punching is never a bad way to go around heavy vegetation. But yeah, if you're getting blow-ups on a frog and the grass is subsurface where you can throw a, a Spook Junior over the top of it, that's what I'm doing and it's working pretty good. Have I ever fished a bull shad? God dang it. Have I ever fished a bull shad? If so... Wow. I have never fished a bull shad, so I don't know what the rest of that... Uh, oh, the hockey puck antenna. No, I don't have the hockey puck antenna. I've never fished a bull shad, so I don't know what the rest of the question was, but I probably don't have an answer for you. Hey, Billy, did you get my question on Instagram? I'd ask, but it's super long. And the character count for text. I will go back and double-check Instagram and try to get back with you, Matt Carville. I need a point one antenna for offshore? Man, I'll be honest with you. You're probably right, Ryan Johnson. I probably do. But I'm going to tell you honestly, man, on Fork, I'm kind of old school in the fact that I've just fished that lake for so long. with, And I started fishing it with very subpar equipment that I actually use, like, actual landmarks still. I still do, like, the old triangulation method almost or maybe every bit as much as I use my GPS. New favorite lake is Lake Fork. Caught a 6.3-pounder in the grass after a downpour three weeks ago. Saw it run up and eat your beaver. Man, that's why Lake Fork is so special. So many fish. So many fish. In that six pound class. And uh, boy, when they start firing, it's a special place. Oh, I got you. Okay, keeps your boat. Yeah, hey, that is uh, that's a pretty good little deal. So apparently that point one antenna keeps your boat, boat pointed correct on the map even when you're not moving. That's very cool. I like that. You get a 45-minute window in the morning and then nothing. Man, go to that wacky worm, dude. Wacky worm if you're fishing shallow. Drop shot if you're fishing deep. I didn't mention the drop shot, but, yo, I mean, the drop shot's catching fish for us on that deep structure, too. It's just catching small fish. Uh, when I run up on them schools of unders and I've been pre-fishing with these guys for this tournament and they want to catch unders, if we throw a drop shot in there with that Lake Fork Tackle Needle Worm, we jack them up real quick. Yeah, boy, Michael Irwin, holler at me. Congratulations on the new place, bro. Do a video on the old... Oh, you want me to do a video on the triangulation? Hey, we can do that. The next time that we uh, do a good offshore video, we will definitely go over triangulation. It's just something that I used to double-check myself. It's how I started learning. It's how I learned when I was a kid. When I was a kid, uh, 
we would fish in some of these areas that had these massive grass flats. And if we had to fish, you know, way out off the bank because it had a massive grass flat, if there was a special spot in that grass, it all kind of looked the same. Um, we would have to triangulate ourselves off the bank. We would have to, you know, pick a spot to our right, pick a spot in front of us, pick a spot to our left, and, and kind of make, you know, center ourselves on all three of those landmarks, and that's how we kept our spot. It's not real precise. It's not exact, but it does help keep you in the right general area. It's a pretty neat deal. I will definitely make a video on that. Try to find one more question. Okay, you asked about the bullshit. He said, when is my favorite time to throw them? Uh, I have never thrown a bullshit, that brand. But I have thrown hard swim baits. And I have thrown a lot of hard swim baits. And when I throw them, so for me, a hard swim bait bite is best whenever the jerk bait bite is best. So if you can catch them on a hard jerk bait, you can catch them on a hard swim bait like a glide bait or even the multi-jointed baits uh, on, on some pausing type retrieves. That's when they seem to work the best. Although if you ask Mojo Fishing, that hard swim bait worked pretty good. He went on a guide trip with me this week. It worked pretty good the other day because we flat smacked them on in Mojo Fishing was throwing the glide bait the whole time. All right, uh, MSU Kicker, what is my opinion on why you caught the six-pounder on fork so shallow? It was around 11 to 12 o'clock. Wouldn't they be out deep? No. You said it just got done raining, right? That means it had been cloudy all day, right? Those fish will stay shallow. There's fish that live shallow on fork that don't ever go deep, and there's big fish. That 10-3 we caught uh, 10, 11 days ago, 12 days ago, whatever it was, that 10-3 was caught in three foot of water at about 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, and it's so far back in a pocket, there's that fish ain't going shallow. It's a half a mile to the main lake from where that fish was. Uh, that fish is living back there. There's fish that live up in that stuff all year. It's one of the reasons that I stay shallow so long because when all the other guides and most of the local anglers are out there rotating spots and fighting each other for main lake points, I'm back here in them grass flats and there's still fish in there and I got it to myself <laughs> a lot of times. Right, but it was, so, the storms were off and on or whatever uh, that day, but, you know, it was probably cloudy most of the day, I'm, I'm assuming, in that situation. But whether it was or not, there's fish, big fish in shallow water year-round on Fork. What type of swim baits am I using in the heat of summer when the water is warm? Well, that, uh, the little five-inch paddle tails work really good over the grass flats, um, we fished a power plant lake earlier this week and the water was like 90 degrees and we were smacking them on glide baits but they were being worked really fast like you had to almost work them like a spook we were working our glide baits super fast and they were just coming unglued on it so uh you can fish all kinds of swim baits this time of year but you have to fish it to me you have to fish them a little bit faster a little bit more erratic those soft swim baits we're getting them in that grass we're ripping them out a lot more erratic retrieve than just, you know, pull it out and slowly reel it in like we traditionally do with the big swim baits in springtime. So I haven't had any issues with LFT fluorocarbon. Uh, depending on what pound test you're looking for, so that stuff comes all the way. So the LFT fluorocarbon, somebody asked if I had any issues with that LFT fluorocarbon. And he says most places have it on back order out of stock trying to get your hands on some so a real quick call long no it was not lake monticello on the uh, lfc fluorocarbon that comes from all the way from france um, that stuff is very difficult to get over here sometimes so there are certain pound tests that are out of stock but the one i'm using the 22 pound uh stuff that i'm using for my football jigs and my swim baits and you know my big line stuff they have it at the LFT store. I just saw it the other day. There's spools sitting on the shelf. So if their website is saying it's out of stock, please let me know. Text me, and I will get with them and have them fix it. Because the 22-pound FHP, LFT FHP, Floor Hybrid Pro, is in stock. I saw spools of it just the other day. Uh, do I think my trolling motor scares the fish away? In shallow water, absolutely. Yeah, I, I like to turn it down. I, I turn it down as much as I can get away with. Um, 
without just, you know, the least amount of power that I can get away with and still do what I need to do with the boat. I'm not going to sacrifice my boat positioning because I can make a long cast and I don't feel like at a long distance it scares them away. But when you're in shallow water, those fish that are close to you, I do feel like it spooks them. Heck, I've seen them run out of the grass mats and run away from you, so it does have an effect. All right, guys, I'm going to have to go ahead and wrap this up. Long day, early morning, the life of a fishing guide. And I want to thank each and every one of you that watches this channel, tells your friends, helps us grow this channel. It means so much to me personally. Really appreciate it. Hey, start letting your buddies know about these live feeds. We're getting a pretty good amount of people here, but not near the amount that we get to watch videos all the time. So tell your friends that every Thursday evening, your Lake Fork Guide, live streams, top five baits, Q&A, all that good stuff. Really cannot say thank you enough for everything that you guys are doing, watching this channel, helping me grow it. And, man, if y'all want to get out on the water and fish with me, just give me a call anytime. We've got some dates open the very last week of June, and then we've got a lot of dates open in July, and we've got a lot of dates open in August. So we got some good summertime fishing. It may be on a different lake than Fork. If Fork's fishing tough, we'll go to a different lake. But if you want to get out and go hammer on some summertime bass and have a good old time, if you have, like, a split day in mind, you want to work around the scheduling of it and not fish in the hot part of the day, we can do that. I'm very flexible. Just let your boy know. We'll take care of you guaranteed. We will have more fun than any other boat on the water. And other than that, we will see you guys. Oh, one more question. You're going to be, yeah, I'm going to be at the Skeeter Tournament Sunday. I will not be there Saturday. I will be there Sunday. If you see me, please come up and say hi. Love to meet every one of you guys. Other than that, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time right here on your Lake Fort Guide.